If you're like me, there are some weeds on farms that send a shiver down your spine. None more than the blackberry, first introduced into Australia in the 1840s and first declared a weed in Victoria in 1906. This problematic plant proves really difficult to control on farms, even with chemical means. Today, I'm just outside Lee and Gatha with Jackie Checkley, and she's going to show us some novel ways of controlling blackberry and getting on top of it using natural systems of management and no chemicals. And even more, she's going to tell you how they can actually be an asset through this process. <laughs> Jackie, how are you going? I'm good, Tim. Good to see you. It's fantastic to be out here again. Blackberries, control thereof. You must be doing something. There's a gap. Well, it's interesting you say that because I use hay bales in winter as part of my management of blackberries without chemicals. So in the winter, I'll place a round bale at the top here and I'll roll it out through the blackberries. So we're in southern Victoria. This is my version of bale grazing in the winter. Normally we can't get the tractor on the paddocks. We've got a few hills. So I just put the bales out before the winter and then as I rotationally graze the paddocks I put the bales out as they strip into them but I've got the cows trained to roll out the bales for me thanks girls so you actually feed your cattle on top of the blackberries? Yeah, I want them to do some of the work for me. So I roll out the bale through the middle of the blackberry. They get in there, they stomp on the ground, they poo, they pee, and they will clear the blackberries, change the soil conditions so the blackberry doesn't want to grow anymore. You've got this theory that blackberries grow in underutilised or lazy land. Yeah, it seems to be that blackberries grow in sleep, what I call sleepy soil. So that hasn't got a high pressure on it from the cattle, usually in big paddocks where the cattle can selectively graze all around it. So part of the strategy that I'm implementing here on this farm is to make much smaller paddocks. So where I had one paddock, I've now got three. So, and with the strip grazing, there's intense pressure. The cows eat much more of it. They graze in and around the blackberries they chew the tips off and then after they've been there I will throw some multi-species seed under the plants so the next time they come in there's more tasty food so they dig deeper into the blackberries and do the work for me. Jackie something else is happening over here these blackberries they're not looking too healthy are they? What's happening here? You no, must have sprayed them. I haven't sprayed them Tim but what I've noticed is that underneath the blackberries the critters have got in they're turning over the soil bars. They're digging holes and killing the blackberries. So have you got a rabbit problem? I don't actually have any rabbits here, Tim. So what's doing this? So well, I've identified the bandicoots digging in there, eating the roots during the drought especially, because they're tasty over winter. What are you doing to, bandicoots are pretty rare in a lot of Australia, what are you doing to increase the bandicoot population to the point where it's knocking off your blackberries? So the way that I'm managing the farm is naturally bringing them back in. So by keeping the ground covered and covered for most of the, the year with long vegetation, there's room for them to hide. Um, they can hide from the protected from the predators. Um, and there's an increased food source because of the increased biodiversity that's on the farm. And the paddocks are only disturbed by the cattle a couple of times a year, aren't they? So about once a season, once every, every 90 days, the cows are intensively grazed. Um, and then they're out for the rest of the time. So good cattle management and intensive rotational grazing is leading not only to better cattle health and better pastures, but also more biodiversity that's controlling some of the weed problems. It is, but I don't have weeds. I just have less desirable plants or indicator species. So this has indicated what the problem was that I mentioned previously, and now it's been taken care of. Now you've also come up with a really clever way of managing blackberries with like-minded plants. Let's go and have a talk about that. Just down here, you reckon you've got a really exciting potential biological control for blackberries? I think I do. So Jackie, tell us more about this fascinating little plant and your observations, because it's, it's an incredible story. 
Okay, so this incredible little plant is called sheep's burnet. It's something that the cows can eat. It's got a big tap root. It's perennial, loves drought, and is evergreen in the summer. So this plant is... So a very useful fodder plant. Useful fodder plant, and I'm hoping that it's also useful for replacing the need in the soil for growing... Currently it grows blackberries. I'm hoping that this sheep's burnet will do the same function and replace them. So you've been mapping the species across your farm. You've noticed that you've got over 130 species and 29 different families. And you started to notice a pattern that when you saw some members of a family, you didn't see others. Tell me a little bit more about that and why this has led to you trialling sheep's burnet in your paddock for blackberries. Okay, so it started off where ragwort is generally a problem or can be a problem in the area that we live in. But I noticed that where I had chicory growing in the paddocks, I didn't have ragwort. So then I started to look into and question, why is there no ragwort in these paddocks? Okay. So chicory is in the same plant family as ragwort. It's asteraceae, it's in the daisy plant family. So my thoughts then went to, is chicory doing the same job for the soil that what the ragwort was doing? If I plant chicory, there's no need for ragwort in the soil. Clearly I didn't plant the ragwort, but the seeds were already there. So by adding that diversity, but most farmers do not plant flowering plants or plants in the daisy family. They see them as less useful. See them as less useful. I've looked a different view and thinking, right, oh, chicory is a really useful plant. I'll plant that, it will replace the ragwort. So how does this come to sheep's burnet then? We've, we've, we've replaced ragwort with chicory and that's worked really well. What's led you to think about sheep's burnet and blackberries? So then I started to look at what plant family is the blackberry in? Blackberries in the rosaceae family. Is there uh, something that I can use in the pasture that's in that same plant family? I come across sheep's burnet. Sheep's burnet is not commercially available in Australia for farmers but it's marketed as salad burnet for gardeners. So I bought a packet of salad burnet, planted it out here, and you can see it's growing clearly with the idea that this is a fairly protected area, it's under a fence line. The cows won't get access to it, except when they're walking down this laneway once every three days. It should be able to grow, get established, go to seed, and the seed drift down the paddock. Down the slope with the water and so on. Down the slope with the water and the wind and the birds and um, gradually seed out the paddock below, which has got problem or has got blackberries in it, which are less desirable and I don't want. And there's something else that I've noticed as well. The location that you've chosen to plant your salad burnet, it's right next to some young blackberry seedlings. So you reckon that that's the soil expressing a likeness, a likeness or a compatibility to that family of plants. Yeah, so the blackberries don't grow everywhere, so what is it that the soil needs in this particular part of the land where we're sitting um, that causes the blackberries to grow? Can the sheep's burnet fulfil that role? Fascinating experiment. We'll have to come back in a few years and see how it works. Okay, there's some more diversity here. I've got some carrots growing here. I've got some clover. I've got some plantain all of them doing a job for the soil. Diversity, diversity, diversity. You've got one more trick up your sleeve, haven't you? And it's a log. I have. Since I made the paddocks much smaller, not all paddocks have trees in for the cows to scratch on. So I've added these scratching posts into my paddocks for the cows. Now I've placed them strategically in this paddock because I've got these blackberries here that I don't want. So I've placed the scratching post in the middle of the blackberries the cows will do the work for me. They will walk around, stomp, and get rid of my less desirable species. So Jackie, you're using plants, you're using your grazing animals, you're using native animals, and you're using whole farm management to get on top of a less desirable plant species. I've got to get that weed word out of my head. Yes. And it just makes sense, doesn't it? Rather than reaching for the chemical bottle, use everything that you've already got at your disposal that you don't have to pay for. Absolutely, nature's a complex system, so we need to have think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. So reaching for the chemical bottle, somebody else gets richer, you haven't fixed the problem in your soil. So you need to look at what the problem is, what to do about it.
send this video to someone who's got their own less desirable plants and needs some ideas about how to use everything that's already in their toolbox to get on top of them. Jackie, thanks so much for your time. Thank I really you, appreciate it. No don't forget, hit that subscribe button or you miss out on people like Jackie and you don't want to do that.